A close-up look at what is arguably the most monumental place in our state. A state filled with monuments. Right. All this week, News 8's Hannah Mordeaux gives us the inside story of the treasures of Indianapolis. Today's installment is Monument Circle. Monument Circle, and at its heart is the Soldiers and Sailors Monument. Some of us walk by or drive by every day, but don't necessarily stop to really soak it all in. So, we did. Take a look. city and it's a great opportunity to come down kind of get centered and see what the city has been about through the years. During the summer Casey Zeronic with Indiana Landmarks gives one hour tours once a month of a one-of-a-kind monument. Walk around learn everything. Yeah. Okay well let's do it. All right so what I'm thinking when I walk up here is how smart the design of the monument is. So it's the soldiers and sailors monument right? So if you're new to town or you haven't been here, you don't know what it's called, Soldiers and Sailors. It opened in 1902, standing 286 feet tall. It's just a little bit uh, shorter than the Statue of Liberty, so it is a really impressive monument in the center of the city. Before, the center of the city sat a bit undecided. When the city was designed by Alexander Ralston, this was actually supposed to be the governor's house, and it didn't work out, and so we went through several iterations. It was a city park before it was the monument. Um, it had the statue of Governor Morton in the middle, and after the Civil War, they decided maybe we needed to make a little bit more of a statement. She says the monument was designed by a German architect during a competition to see who could embody Indianapolis. So everything in the circle is actually designed as part of the monument. So he has bison, um, and then if you look up, you can also see bears. The bears are not necessarily native to Indiana. The limestone is, and the war depictions, a memory of the Hoosiers before us. Well, it was something that the community came together to put up as a, a way to honor the soldiers and sailors who had fought in, you know, the 19th century wars. And along with the history, they hope that people take away a greater message of the monument, the purpose, the sacrifice of the soldiers and the sailors. This was the first monument in the country that was dedicated to the common soldier. And so th that's pretty important. General Stuart Goodwin is the executive director of the Indiana War Memorials Commission and a retired Air Force general. He understands this importance. The part of honoring the soldiers is very important because they never, never got that kind of recognition. I think it's also important for you to know that when it was built, there was only one monument in the whole country that was taller than this monument and that was the Washington Monument in D.C. How could they construct something like this so many years ago? It seems tough this day and age. Well, it's, it's kind of like the pyramids. It became a part of the National Register of Historic Places. The details, evident, both near and far. The stone came from uh, Spencer, Indiana, uh, in uh, Owen County. You used to be able to go inside. Where's that stand now, and what's the possibility for the future? Well, we went through a major renovation uh, with moving the Eli Lilly Civil War Museum. The artifacts inside needed to be better preserved. For now, the inside is off limits and hopes to one day reopen with a gift shop. In the meantime, he says the monument is also just a place to gather. The fountains are a very important part because they they add a sense of calmness, and they're a place they're, they're for a meeting place. And even over 100 years ago, it was clear, if you build it, they will come. It doesn't matter what it is, people want to have it here. This is the icon. And as we're going inside the monument, it's not clear when that gift shop will open, but whenever it does, they say they're only going to sell locally made Indiana merchandise there. You want to share the funny story about why the governor's residence plan didn't happen? I really do. So he's <laughs> filling them in in the commercial break. Uh, apparently, the general says that the governor's house was supposed to be there, but his wife didn't want her bloomers out on the clothing line for everybody in the city to see. I feel like that's fair. <laughs> it makes total sense. Let's I talk don't about want my bloomers. <laughs> I know. Mean, not for <laughs> everyone to see. Bloomers staying in the private. Uh, what do you have coming up tomorrow? Oh, tomorrow's a good one. We are headed to the Indiana War Memorial. So we'll have to wait and see. This was part two of my series on touring Indy's treasures. We've made it really easy for you to go back and see part one. Just grab your phone right now. You can scan the QR code. It's right here on your screen. And it will take you to the inside story page on Wish TV.